Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Revisited. I'm Nye and that evil looking thing over there is the Anguilla. And he is the boss of the Dark Rift and we have to go say hi. So let's go do that. And as soon as we get close it growls at me and a ship to ship battle begins. By ship to ship I mean ship to monster. Say hi to the Anguilla which is essentially a uh... I don't know what it is. Like an eel of some sort. And it's uh, kind of living in the vortex. So we gotta say hi to it. And by high, I mean we gotta set up to do a lot of damage next turn. So we're gonna drop an Incrum there, and we're just going to, uh, I think I'm gonna have Aka, I don't know, she's gonna go ahead and focus up. Fina, why don't you throw fire at it? There's a good girl. We're gonna heal up. You'll notice that I'm not particularly making a uh, effort to evade this guy or avoid dealing da or avoiding damage. It's also because he doesn't like dealing damage. What he does, he just kind of sits there in that vortex and uses those clouds to cover himself. Which makes it kind of hard for you to damage him, but he also doesn't like coming up here to damage you. Yeah, like, that, that's that's most of the fight right there. You have a high chance of dodging, uh, not dodging, but uh, missing him. There's not a lot that you get to do, so you got to kind of just take the shots when you can. I used magic because supposedly it has a better chance of actually hitting him than just about everything else. But that's about it. I mean, there's not really much else you can do against this guy. this guy. He'll hide a lot, he'll come out to deal damage every once in a while. And that's about it. For the first couple of turns, at least. So, I know you saw, if you were watching, on my upcoming turn, there's a chance to fire the Moonstone Cannon. And that's what we're kind of waiting for. That is why I'm sitting here, incrumed up, and, you know, focusing all I've got. Because I want to ensure that I can deal as much damage as possible. That's his biggest attack right there, and only dealt about 4,800 damage. That's that, that's it. That's all he's got. We have 4,400 health. So we're going to give him the option to pull back a little bit, which gives us the uh, wrong option up there, or stay put and keep shooting. Uh, we're going to take some damage, but if we move around, we might actually lose sight of our target. We don't want to do that. So there's our turn that we actually get to use the Moonstone Cannon, which I'm obviously going to do. I'll take one shot with the... Uh, you know what? We're going to, take, we're going to do the Valuin... Um, torpedo and then we're just gonna focus up the rest of the turn and that should be all we have to do this is not gonna kill him I don't think uh, I don't believe we're gonna do quite enough damage to completely take him out but we should get him about halfway down and hopefully this will encourage him to leave the vortex as long as he is in there I can do next to nothing uh, he has a lot of uh, health and he has an incredibly high dodge rate inside of that vortex but as soon as you do enough damage or after a certain amount of turns have passed um, he just, he, just, he just leaves. He just, he just steps out of that thing and starts to attack you directly. He'll do more damage than, uh, than he does now. Wow, we did so little damage. Why did that happen? That's kind of that's kind of off-putting. I should have dealt twice that amount. The hell, the hell just happened? I'm not going to ask. You know what? I'm not going to ask. I don't care. We're going to kill him eventually. But after dealing enough damage, he'll leave. And uh, when he's out of the vortex, he'll do more damage, but so will you. And uh, then it's just a standard ship-to-ship -ship battle. Nothing, uh, nothing special actually happens. So we'll fire off our torpedoes. I have no idea where those are going to go, because there's nothing but, like, vines up above me. Kind of a problem. Okay. So we're just going to, like, stretch back and wait. Uh, there's uh, nothing more for me to do. It's going to poison spray. I may have to heal myself eventually. We're not healed after we uh, fought the battle of the Auriga, so our health's down to about half right now. Something I've actually kind of forgotten. So it's going to keep on going to the vortex. We can't keep a lock on it. Impossible to hit it. How can we expect to hit it if we can't see? Unfortunately, I did not deal quite enough damage to really piss this thing off and cause it to want to come say hi. So uh, we're just going to launch a little torpedo here, and then we're going to focus the rest of the turn. And hopefully this will deal enough damage to it on that command turn. Uh, and next turn, unfortunately, I'm going to have to heal because I'm taking a fair amount of damage here. Uh, he didn't, I didn't deal as much damage as I thought I would, so I don't know if I was resisted on that, uh, Moonstone Cannon, or what. You know, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. I was expecting more around the, uh, 20,000 damage mark. Maybe 25, and uh, we only got about half of that. So we're just gonna wait. My C turn is almost guaranteed to actually hit, so we're just gonna wait on that. And, uh, yeah. Kind of a, kind of a boring fight, really. He doesn't really do all that much, just kind of hangs out, messes around. Here comes another uh, poison spray. He has another attack he hasn't used. He has a bite attack that uh, he has a chance to do. 
but he hasn't done it. He's not hes not really done anything, to be honest. Oh, hey, look, there's some damage. As you can see, he doesn't have a lot of health, and uh, we do a good amount of damage if we can land a hit. So on this next turn, when we actually... when everything's attacking at once, we should do a lot of damage right here. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Not as much damage as I would like. I'm kind of surprised the main cannon only did about 2,000 damage. See, now he's coming out. So he has decided that enough is enough and that he is not going to sit there inside of that vortex because it's not protecting him. Unfortunately, with that big forehead of his, he's a very easy target. He's coming out of the vortex, and now it's our chance to attack him. So now it's more like a regular ship-to-ship -ship battle. Notice all of the command chances that we have here. I'm just going to take a shot here. Uh, you're going to sack rule, and that's going to give us full health. Oh, I can't. Okay, I can't do it with you. Just focus. You're going to sack rule in here, and you're going to focus. Now, notice that I'm I'm attacking with the sub cannon entirely through this turn. Previously, we did not have a sub cannon good enough that would allow us to attack as many turns as we did. Now, I paid for these attacks with Aka a while ago. Like, I'm not paying for them now. I paid for them some time ago. That's the awesome thing about sub cannons is that. You have paid the SP for them ahead of time, and you can keep on attacking into future turns and still have SP available. Uh, there's the bite attack. Even though it shows him inside of the uh, vortex, even though he wasn't actually there. But, um, yeah, you pay for them ahead of time, so you can still do damage consistently, even if you wouldn't have otherwise had the SP to do it. Which is kind of cool. The one problem is, it does... Oh, nice! That was a dear, uh, decent amount of damage. Uh, the only problem with the uh, thing is that it does tie up your character on those turns. So, as you saw with Aka, I couldn't get a heal off of Aka in the early turns because Aka was currently taken up using the sub cannon. Which, you know, it's no big deal. Just kind of a pain in the ass. So this thing is almost dead. It's taken a little bit longer to kill it than I was expecting. It's just biting pieces off of my ship. That's, again, one of the things I wish that they they would upgrade in an HD remake is damage to ship. It would be so cool to see bite marks just on the ship. I don't know why that would be so cool, but admit it. You would like to see bite marks on the ship, too. Don't lie to me. Don't you lie to me. We both know you would love to see bite marks on the ship, especially bite marks that if we healed them, they would just, like, they would fill in or, or something. I don't know. But it is very cool to see the pieces fall off like that. So we're almost done. This turn should finish him off, depending on how good our accuracy is. That torpedo should have a fairly decent amount of accuracy in and of itself. And we have two main cannon barrages, plus a sub cannon to finish him off. Well, the, the torpedoes hit. I'm kind of annoyed the, adva the advanced cannon didn't, but uh, the torpedoes did hit there, which is pretty nice. So that was a good six, 7,000 damage right there. The advanced cannon should have hit, and that would have dealt another 7,000 damage. Can we take him out, please? Really? 2,000 damage off the super cannon? Are you kidding me? The sub cannon's gonna do more damage than that. Oh, he was taking evasive action. Okay, that's understandable. I kind of wish I had known that ahead of time, you know? Here comes the sub cannon. As I said, it did do more damage. I, I wasn't lying, it did more damage. Okay, well, it'll take one more turn. This is obnoxious. The one thing is, if you take too long, he likes to dive back into, uh... He likes to go back into the vortex. And I really don't want that. That Oh, no, 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 you bastard, no! Damn it. Okay. So we're just gonna... Stay put and keep shooting. Unfortunately, I don't have the opportunity to fire the Moonstone Cannon this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire an advanced cannon right here, and we're just going to focus on the rest. If I don't kill him this turn, we'll kill him next turn with the Moonstone Cannon. But this has taken so much longer than it should have. We should have gotten him killed so much faster than this. It's kind of terrible. It really is. This is all kinds of terrible. This is terrible. Turbul. Turbul Space Program. Exactly. And now he's hiding again, so he's hiding on the turn I would have liked to shoot him. Which sucks. Sucks mightily. Okay, we'll kill him next turn. It's fine. It's no big deal. We got him. Absolute pain in the ass. Space eel. How does this thing fly? 
I'm in a ship that's shooting like jets out of the bottom of the ship to lift me up. How on earth is this thing flying? Not only that, how is it surviving the intense winds inside of that little vortex? Does that have something to do with the humongous forehead? It looks like nothing so much as a gigantic hammer. Or a toucan's head attached to a stick. With a bite, with, with teeth at the top of it, I don't know. But I mean, honestly, how was this thing surviving in this? Much less my cannons that are ripping it to shreds, or the moonstone cannon which should have flambéed it from the inside. Stay put and keep shooting. I've told you that like four times. I don't want to go anywhere. We're going to kill this thing, and that's it. We're going to kill it. We're going to kill it dead. And you know what? Here, Aka, shoot it. And you, shoot it. And you can focus. And this should kill it. This should totally kill it. There is no reasonable reason why this thing should survive this next attack. At all. See, it's preparing its attack. It's going for that last ditch 11th hour effort, which, if it survived this, would piss me off. Good thing it won't. Moonstone cannon, fire. One. There we go. Okay. That's fantastic. And now it dies. I feel better. Woohoo! Okay. There's some experience. There's some money. We got a concussion bomb, a heavy torpedo, and a timing valve. And that torpedo is actually a hint. The game wants you to set this torpedo up. And I'm completely willing to listen. So notice that the attack power goes up, but the hit percentage goes down. Only 50% hit rate. The SP goes up, so I need 4 SP. and But it can go for 3 turns. You can send it 3 turns out. Which uh, is not incredibly important, to be honest. Uh, I want Tikitaka to be in my main. There's a reason, I promise. And uh, Fina. Fina, my dear. Magic. Sakrulin. Heal everybody up, especially the ship. Yes, she just healed the ship. That is that is true. Okay. So we are going to uh, head out. So we're just going to head through here. So we did find everything in the uh, Dark Rift. We're done. We don't have to find anything else. We found every item. We opened every chest. Uh, we're done in here. And uh, I made sure to pick up Robinson, even though I uh, generally shouldn't have. Like, had to leave and come back. But I got Robinson, so we're done in here. We never have to come back to the Dark Rift unless we want to for one very specific thing. And if we go out here, we have made it through the Dark Rift. Now, if we go through the wrong exit, because it is possible if you if you go through the wrong exit, uh, it is actually very possible to go back into the Esperanza side of the Dark Rift. If you leave through the Esperanza exit, it is a, like, reddish cloud. If you leave through the, dark, the uh, Yafutoma exit, it is a blue cloud. Uh, Aka and Rika can't believe that we're actually going to see on the other side of the Dark Rift, that we're making history, and, uh, here we are. So that's generally good stuff. Where are we on the map? So we made our way, so this is Esperanza, so we went down, and we went up. So we know where we are, so the question is, where are we? Eh, that's a very good question. Let's go ahead and pick up some of these fish. No, no, do not... Come here, you pan the asses. Okay, we got some fish. So we want to head our way over in a northeasterly direction. Because one of these islands, I believe it's this one, has a discovery for us. This one right here. This has the uh, Uguisu's Nest. Although this bird builds its nest in rock faces, for some reason they always travel northwards to human civilizations to raise their young. That is why sailors have learned to recognize these nests as signs that a human civilization is nearby. So that should be a good indication that there is, you know, a human civilization nearby, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Well, I can't do anything about this thing right now, so we're going to go northwards. Notice these walls here? Yeah. Can I trigger this early? I can. Or I can fight. That too.
Well, that was a blue looper, so we're definitely in the land of the blue moon. And these are the Guardian Walls, a massive fortress built by an ancient Yafutomid king. Rather than as a form of defense, the walls were said to have been built so that lookouts could spot enemy ships before they got too close to the city they were trying to defend. Cool stuff. And this means that we're getting close to Yafutoma, which also is a bit of a problem. The reason why is that Yafutoma does not want us here. They do not like us. We are not welcome. Generally a bad thing. Now, uh, let's see. Whereabouts am I? Am I in the right spot? Hmm. That's a good question. I'm looking for a very specific thing here. Let's see, where is this thing I'm looking for? Nope, we're gonna have a cutscene. Okay. Well, I'll find that discovery later. No worries. So we're looking around, and Aiko wants to know if we hear anything besides the wind. Good question. Enrique can hear something, but not sure what it is. Hmm. I wonder, what would you find out in airship area? Well, you're in an airship. Could it be another airship? Maybe that one? Or that one? Or that one? There's a lot of airships in the area, and none of them appear to be very friendly. Especially that one. Not to mention they are firing at me. I didn't even get so much as a howdy. Let's take evasive action, quickly! Oh, no, we got hit. Lots of damage. Ow! This came out of nowhere and attacked us. Now you can see why I healed up my ship, right? Uh-huh. Looks like we're gonna have to take them down. Battle stations, let's go! But yeah, this is one of the few times when a ship-to-ship -ship battle comes out of absolutely nowhere. Other times, you can kind of see it coming, but the Tenku, no. They wonder if we can think that we can defeat them with that big block of steel we call ourselves a ship. You know, they're of course in a wooden ship, apparently. So, there's this is the thing about the Tenku ship. It's... It's a weird ship. It can do things that my ship can't. Generally, this would make me upset. But we have actually set this up in such a way that we should be able to beat them. Notice how high they are compared to me. They fly a lot higher than I do. That's a problem. My ship doesn't like to tilt. So in order to shoot up, I have to fire a torpedo or something. I can only shoot them when they're kind of on level with me. Oh, it's just kind of an issue. So that's why I'm going to fire torpedoes, because torpedoes like to go up and down, whereas the rest of my ship does not, and we're going to try to beat them with that. This is also the Tenku spell ship, so they're going to cast a lot of spells at me, and the problem is spells do a lot of damage. So I'm going to have to keep very close attention on to my HP. Unfortunately, I only have uh, one torpedo. Luckily, we dealt a lot of damage to that one. But I only have really one torpedo, so uh, I'm only going to be able to deal with that, the damage to that for the most part. He has a lot of torpedoes, apparently. Got a hole in the back just for torpedoes. I mean, I do too, but, you know, mine's kind of at the front and I have like six of them. I like my ship better, obviously. Okay, so, that's, you know, as I said, this ship can be a pain in the ass just because, look at, look, lots of damage. I mean, you can see all the damage that we're getting uh, dealt to us here. But, uh, that Yafutum and ships can climb to great altitudes that our cannons can't reach, but our torpedoes can. So they're giving me the hint of the thing that I already know. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fire another one of these. And I'm gonna have Ake uh, heal us. Why not? Because we can. And we're just gonna keep on waiting. Because there's basically nothing I can do until such a turn as the game gives me my chance. It gives me my shot at them. So, uh, here comes my tor uh, torpedo. It's gonna fly straight up. I'm still under Inkrum for at least one more turn. Now they're firing basic cannons. Their spells do a lot more damage than their cannons do. So, yeah, that is definitely a thing. And there's a little bit of healing. I'm sorry, you're not the only ones who can cast spells. I cast them too, and my spells are better. My spells are considerably better. Lots better. My spells are very better. But keep in mind, they can heal too. That is, a, that is an ability that their ship has. Okay. Lots of damage off the crystal. But we're cool. We're just gonna wait for a chance, then we're gonna start firing cannons at them. So they're gonna focus up. 
So as you can see, every so often they do come up and, you know, get right alongside me. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take it... Oh, no. We're going to want to take advantage of those turns by laying on as much damage as we can. Like, uh, say this. Nope, nope, nope. Again, there. And then focusing up the rest of them. Because that's the turn, um... That's the turn when they're actually going to be right next to me, I believe, if I remember correctly. Here comes another Crystal, uh, Crystalli. Not as much powerful as the Crystallis, but still does a lot of damage. Okay. So now we're firing the Cannon Coil. I, uh, I apparently hit. That's great. So they're still level with me, so this is where bad things start to happen for them. Because now I can deal a lot of damage to them. And this is when the game just gives you me the chance. It just says, you know what? We've screwed, we've dicked around with you enough. Do your damage. And I will, sir. I will do all of the damage. Unfortunately, I did not do quite enough damage. Oh well, we'll hit them one more time, but I mean, it's not going to take that long, right? Now, unfortunately, they are under... Uh, there's, there's a certain point where they start healing themselves. They're under that point, so I need to make sure I deal basically as much damage as I can, as fast as I can. So, we'll get to the turn select. They're going to take evasive action against the attack I didn't actually commit. But there was no way for them to know I wouldn't commit it, because they're not like a computer or a cheating bastard, right? So we're going to drop the heavy torpedo here. We're going to do the 10-inch cannon coil. I'm mostly doing it ahead of time, just on the off chance that I'm able to land a hit and just end this sham early. You know, like that. And down that ship goes. You guys shouldn't have attacked me right off the bat. 478 experience is nothing at this point in the game. And we got a pyro bomb and a crystal ball, and that's about it. We got nothing special for that fight, because it wasn't meant to be anything special. But considering you just did a ship-to-ship -ship boss battle, you know, it's a bit of a thing. So we got our victory music, but unfortunately the Yin Yang, the Tanku flagship, is coming right at me. And they don't give me any chance to do anything. Uh, the uh, flagship approach, there's two boats, no one boat, no two boats, no, it's a catamaran! And they're boarding us. Because for some reason we don't shoot them. I don't know why we don't shoot them, we just shot another one of their boats. But uh, now the game kicks it over to me, so I'm allowed to sort of explore. If you need to save, this is a good time. But uh, I think we're going to be fine. What I am going to do... Yes, it gives me the chance, okay. What I am going to do is go to Vice, and I'm going to equip the black hat, because I did take that off some time ago. Or the captain's hat. So I took that off a while ago uh, for the... Uh, uh, dark, uh, dark rift. And now we're gonna go out onto the deck. Out we go. And now it is time for another fight. We are having three boss fights, one after the other. It is boss rush mode. Here on Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Revisited. Where are our enemies? There's a deep voice behind us. They have been waiting for me. And up there are a pair of twins. That is Jow. And that is Mao. It is their mission to collect 1,000 swords. And that is the last time you will ever hear a reference to this mission. We must pick one of two choices. Surrender and give up our weapons. Or die and they'll take our weapons. It is up to you to decide your fate. Hmm, I wonder what the swashbuckler choice is. How about we kick your butts and toss you overboard? Besides, you're unarmed. What could you possibly do to me? Not much, admittedly. Okay, it is boss time. And we're gonna do this boss right. Uh, actually, uh, Zhao and Mao can actually be a fairly difficult fight, as you might, uh, guess. Because the game, you know, it, the game's making that whole unarmed joke. So this can actually be a tough fight. But, uh, you know, if you... You're gonna be fairly high in health after everything, because you haven't done an actual, like, battle battle in quite a while. Yes, you've been fighting a lot of random battles, but that's kind of that's kind of all you've been doing for quite some time. So you shouldn't expect to have too much trouble here. You're going to be at full health, and you can fight the way you normally would. These two guys do have some special, special skills, though. I haven't even seen some of these. I don't think I've ever seen him use that skill Let's before. So we're just going to glyph up here. And we'll get some heals going. And I think I'm going to actually use Prophecy this time, because I, I typically don't. So we're going to see how many turns it takes me to get to Prophecy, so we can kind of compare it to kind of a standard uh, this should work. Like a standard operating procedure, how I usually fight, which is Glyph Up, Pirate's Wrath, Pirate's Wrath, Pirate's Wrath. 
So we're going to see exactly how this works. So that was turn the first. So this is going to be turn two. And I'm going to... This is not optimal the way I'm doing it, but I decided to use a glyph of speed just so I can get that heal off as fast as possible. Because I do want to make sure I have heals up. They, I could potentially take a decent amount of damage here. As you can already see, Aka's already below half health, so I definitely want to make sure this is going. But we're just going to focus on focusing and uh, get as much SP as possible. So this is turn two. And, you know, that, you know, we're not taking a lot of damage or anything, so I'm not concerned. So in two turns, Urnagun is the move he's using here. Oh, he's, throw, he's throwing Focus Fire Ninja Stars at me. Okay. That dealt a fair amount of damage. So glad I made sure to get those heals up. So this is turn two, and we have made it to about 25 uh, spirit. Beginning of turn three, we've made it to 36. Sack rum. So it's going to take me four turns to pull off a prophecy. Keep in mind, last turn, not only did I have Glyph of Might, but I would have been able to Pirate's Wrath. So the question is, and so I would also be able to Pirate's Wrath next turn, just kind of on average. So the question is, can this one prophecy do enough damage with two Pirate's Wrath? Supposedly yes, but I don't use prophecy all that often, so we're going to see. Here comes another Urnagun. I really wish I could skip these animations, because while cool the first time, they are particularly long. Now here's the problem. If this kills Fina, which it almost did, if that had killed Fina, I would no longer be able to use Prophecy. Notice on the far left-hand side how my uh, command window spun, and this is now Crew Special instead of being a uh, Run. Now I have to use Prophecy or Blue Rogues. Blue Rogues is a move I will use in the near future, and it gives you abilities based on all of the crew members you currently have. Each one will change the effect a little bit. Uh, it's got heals in it, it's got damage in it, all sorts of stuff. Prophecy is the super-powered attack that we're planning on using this turn. So all of our crew members get together. You cannot do this until you get Enrique, if I remember correctly. No, actually, no, you can get this as soon as you get, um, uh, as soon as you get, uh, I think someone said you can get it as soon as you do to Cat's Island. But, um, Prophecy, you call down a moon on top of people. You, you basically pull off, oh, there you go, both of them died. You get to pull off a, uh, Sephiroth, essentially. Lots of damage based on all of your allies. And the other thing is, it takes up the entire turn. Not just your turn, but your opponent's turn, too. So you don't have to be afraid of using it because it doesn't just it doesn't hog tie you the way you'd assume it would. You get a moonberry, lots of experience. So four turns to beat that. I'm kind of curious how fast I could have beaten it using uh, Pirate's Wrath. We are stronger than these two thought, and they must report this to their commander. And they commit suicide. Their commander's death, obviously. No, of course not. They have the really deep ship, which was waiting for them way down there where we couldn't see them, waiting for just a perfect moment. They're sitting there on the edge of their thing and have to comment that they rule the skies of Yafutoma and they're known as the Tenko. The Westerners, they, we shall meet again. And off they go. Well, aren't they nice? They just welcomed me to the family. So happy. How can they fly so high? That's a very good question. The blue moon zones hold the power of wind and water. The Afatoman ships are powered by these stones. By harnessing the power of the wind, their ships can reach altitudes that we can only imagine. Fina, this would have been great information to know beforehand. Looks like we chased them off, so we should try to find Yafutoma. That is a ridiculously good idea. I like this idea. I'm excited to be a part of it. But that is going to be something we're going to have to do in the future after we find the Spice Island, which I was literally right on top of. If I was allowed to move one more inch further before the fight started, I would have already found this discovery. And this is a very important discovery to find. This is a small remote island where a pure spring nurtures a wide variety of herbs and spices. The water in the spring has medicinal value due to the abundant herbs nearby. Perhaps this beautiful garden is the true fountain of youth. And while we're here, Aka comments there's so many herbs and spices growing here and she's never seen so many in one place. And we say it's amazing, truly a treasure island. Fina says we shouldn't really disturb the island too much, but Aka thinks that if we took too many of the seeds and stuff, the trees might not be able to grow back. But she sure would be okay just to take a little bit, right? Sure, just a little bit. So we're going to take something with us, and that's going to give us the spice kale, which we're going to need for a side quest in the future. 
And that's it, guys. Thanks for joining me, and I will see you guys next time as we explore Yafutoma. See you later.